Is your RVAC tripping a breaker every time you try to cool down? In this video, we'll cover the common reasons your RVAC might be overloading the breaker. The first issue is dirty RV air conditioner coils. Now, this is one of the things that gets neglected quite often because people are not up on the roof cleaning and maintaining them. So let me show you where they're at. There is two different coils. The one underneath of the cover I just pulled off, this is your evaporator coil. So right down below us here is the inside of our room. So air comes up through the filter, goes through this coil, gets cooled off and pushed back down into the room. If this was dirty, this would block airflow and performance inside of the RV. Now there's a coil back here behind this foam piece. This is a condenser coil. So this coil is heating up and the fan is blowing air through it to keep it cool. If this coil was blocked with pollen, dirt, debris, it's not going to cool off the air conditioner properly, which can make the unit work too hard, overheat, and trip the breaker. Now keep in mind, the air blows through different directions and different models of air conditioners. Sometimes it blows through this way and comes through the unit, and sometimes it goes through the center and back out this direction. So look on both sides of that coil to see if things are blocked, especially if you're in areas that have the cottonwood trees, it sucks all that cottonwood right inside there. It makes like a blanket inside of the air conditioner. And that is going to block a lot of airflow. So you want to make sure all of that is cleaned out of there. That way everything flows properly to keep the RV unit cool and keep your amps down, which has a less chance of tripping the breaker. Now for cleaning your air conditioner coils, we have a full video on how to do that. I'll link it in the description. Now let's talk about some RV air conditioner components, such as the capacitor, which can definitely trip the breaker if it's weak or it's failed. Your capacitor will be located behind a metal cover and typically you'll see a warning label talking about high voltage and this is what it looks like. Sometimes they're tall and round, sometimes they're short and oval shaped. There'll be some wires connected to the top of it and what these are for is starting the fan motor or the compressor motor. Both of those motors take some extra oomph to make them start and this has the extra boost to make that happen. If this is weak or failed altogether, it's going to put all the extra load onto your circuit breaker inside of your RV and cause a circuit breaker to trip. Now you can test the capacitor to determine if it's failed, weak, or good, but I'm not going to cover that during this video because the average RV owner is not going to be up on their roof testing capacitors because that's some advanced electrical work. But if you are looking to do some more advanced work, I have a multimeter video showing how to use a multimeter, but I do have a full comprehensive course if you need it. You do have to purchase that through our website but it covers things like testing capacitors and other RV appliances, do some full diagnosing and troubleshooting. Now let's talk about weak and failing breakers. Over time, a breaker can wear out from being overloaded and trip before the number it's supposed to trip at. So for example, come on down here. This breaker on our left, we can see this says 20 on it. This is rated for 20 amps. If this breaker was overloaded and maxed out, over time, it'll start tripping at a lower amperage. Maybe it'll trip at 12 amps or 15 amps. And that's a normal range for an air conditioner to be running at. It'll commonly pull between 12 and 15 amps, depending on the brand. But if it's tripping at that normal amperage range, that's leading to possibly a bad breaker. Now, if you look at a breaker itself, and in front of it, this is where you can flip it on and off. If this is mushy and not a nice strong click, that breaker is weak on the inside. If you ever want to compare, you can go to your next breakers in your breaker box. So flip the one next to it over, compare it. If they feel the same, that breaker is probably good. And another way to check your circuit breaker is to use your multimeter to check the AC amperage going through it. That way you can determine how many amps are actually going through that circuit breaker and make sure it is not tripping prematurely. So let me open up the cover and show you how to check it. Okay, now we are going into a live electrical panel. So there is electricity behind here. That's very dangerous. If you're not comfortable, I would suggest not doing this section. But when we pull the cover off, you're going to see the labels for your circuit breakers. So we'll need to find the breaker for our air conditioner. So AC1 in the kitchen. We'll find that circuit breaker in here. And below that is going to be a black wire for your hot lead. Let me shine a flashlight in there so you can see. So if we go right down below that, this will be our air conditioner breaker wire. 
We'll put our clamp meter around this wire. Take our multimeter, set it to amps AC, put it around that wire. Now we'll turn the air conditioner on. Make sure your clamp meter is closed all the way. Once you turn it on, we can look at the meter to see what our reading is. If it is reading 20 amps and it's tripping the breaker, that's telling me there's an issue with the air conditioner itself. Now I'm not hooked up to a full shore power source, so I can't turn the air conditioner on and show you the numbers, but that'll vary based on your situation itself. Every air conditioner unit will have a different amperage rating that it'll run. If it's a 13,500 BTU versus 15,000, each one draws more, different brands draw more. If you want to know the amperage rating of your air conditioner, you can find a data tag on the air conditioner and see what the RLA number is and also the FLA number, add those two together. That's what it should be drawing at 95 degrees outside. And also compare it to your circuit breaker. Sometimes they're 15 amp, but most times they're 20 amp. And the last thing I want to cover about your breaker tripping is going to be going back to your source power. This could be a generator that's possibly undersized or you plugged into shore power, which has low voltage or using multiple extension cords. If you have the high amperage draw, such as an air conditioner on a bad power source and having low voltage, it can make the amps go up and trip the breaker. Now one thing that can help for this, if you install an easy start into the air conditioner, this will help lower the amperage when the air conditioner starts up, which can help ease the load on some of those generators or weaker shore power sources. Now let's cover some frequently asked questions. Should I add a soft start to avoid breaker trips? Well, if you have two air conditioners on a 30 amp RV, or maybe three on a 50 amp RV, Soft starts can help ease a load when the air conditioner starts up. That's a bigger box like this that wires into the air conditioner itself. And it takes the startup amps down to a point where it's not stressing out your electrical system. If you're also going to run your RV on a generator, a soft start is a great idea. So that way it doesn't max the generator out because generators don't like large surges. Next up, why does my breaker trip on hot days during the day, but not in the evening? Well, during the day, the sun is radiating down in the air conditioner, creating more heat, making it work harder, and the sun is down in the evening, and it's not working quite as hard. And this is especially true if you have a black shroud on top of your air conditioner. What's the difference between a capacitor and a soft start, and do I need both? Well, you don't need both, but you need a capacitor. The capacitor starts out the compressor or the fan. Now, an easy start or soft start, they're different brands, so that's why Easy Start, Soft Start, they're both interchangeable to me. This helps start up the compressor by lowering its amp draw. So basically, a capacitor is like you going out and push starting your car. Getting an Easy Start is like getting multiple friends to help push start your car. So if you have both, it's easier on your electrical system, but you just need a capacitor to make everything run. If you've tried everything and your AC is still tripping your breaker, at that point, it's time to call for help. Or if your AC has other issues, like it's not turning on, it's making weird noises, or just not cooling, you'll want to check out the other videos in this series. I put a link to the locator and all those videos in the description down below.